2.2, Estimating Instantaneous Rates of Change from Tables of Value and Equations. Now before I start the lesson, I want to remind you, if you're watching this video, if you could please subscribe so I know how many people are watching and whether or not you want me to keep making you these videos. It's a lot of work, but I know you're appreciating it. I get some very nice comments from you. Okay, so this lesson, Estimating Instantaneous Rates of Change, so now instead of just knowing, yeah, I went to Toronto, um, how fast was I going? And I said I went 400 kilometers, took me four hours. And you say, well, you averaged 100 kilometers per hour. But if I said to you, how fast was I going at 2 o'clock? And you know when you start off in your car, you're not going 100 kilometers an hour. Or you'd be in big trouble driving to the city to get to the main highway. And when you get on the 401 from Ottawa to Toronto, you're probably not doing 100 kilometers per hour because everyone else would be running over top of you. So when I want to know how fast you are going at a specific point in time, that's what we call the instantaneous rate of change. How fast was it going at 2 o'clock? How fast were you going at x equals 1? So what I have here is a little explanation here. So to estimate the instantaneous rate of change, and I'm going to use IRC because it's just, um, it's just a lot of work reading instantaneous rate of change, and you probably won't want to do that yourself. From a table of values, calculate the average rate of change. So we're not actually finding the instantaneous rate of change until you get into calculus and you're taking derivatives and finding this at a certain point. So we're going to estimate it over a short interval where x is equal to x1 in these examples. Okay, so there's three different types of intervals. Um, the following interval, so here's my point here, so this would be px1, right? So this would be um, the point x1, y, and this would be maybe x2. I'm going to call that point p, x2, y. x2 and y. So this would be x2 here, right? So that's a following interval. Following? Why following? Because it comes after it. So it's just semantics here again. This is the following interval. The preceding interval means I use the point before. So this means before x1, following after, preceding before it, and finally the centered interval. The centered interval should give you the best estimation because you use the same distance away from this. It should give you the best rate of change. Like if you took this, um, if you took this secant line now and slid it down like this, look, it's pretty close to what's happening right there, right? Whereas a preceding one, uh, no, and the following one, absolutely not a tangent line. So I'm looking to see if, if that would also make a good tangent line to that point. So the centered interval is generally considered to be the most, or the closest one to um, the average rate of change. So we're going to just zip back for a second to this graph that I showed you a little earlier in the previous lesson. And we're going to find, I'll, I'll just do um, two of them, let's say two. So let's take a look at what happens at the point um, 35 seconds. So here, I'll put a little red mark here. So here's my 35 seconds, and I want to do a centered interval for 35 seconds. So centered interval means I'm going to pick 30 and 40. So those are going to be my two coordinates that I'm going to choose. So this would be centered interval. So I'm going to just write those coordinates down here. So I have 25 and 75.6. So 25 and 75.6. So I'm just reading them right off the, the table of values here. And 35 and 83.6. Can you see that? I can't tell. Usually when I'm at school, the kids would say, Miss, we can't see what you're doing. That's pretty hard when you're doing it on the, inter on the internet. So we want to use 40 and 86.7. So 40, what did I say? I was going to do 35, and then I chose 25. Ah, I'm using, <laughs> let's go back here. We're using this point here. We want to find over the centered interval about this. So I'm doing 30 and 80. Let's get rid of that one. 
30 and 80. You were probably saying that, but I couldn't hear you. 40 and 86.7. So it's as easy as that. You have found two points. Now find the slope. Okay, so for a centered interval, centered interval, I've chosen the two points. Again, I just chose the two points on either side, and they're actually five seconds apart from 35. So 30 and 40, and I just found the y coordinates. All I do is subtract them. So the instantaneous rate of change, and I'm just going to write estimated because it's not exact, right? It's an estimation. So I'm going to do 86.7 minus 80 divided by 40 minus 30. That's going to be easy to calculate. I can do that in my head. So it's 6.7 on the top and 40 minus 30 is 10. So that's equal to 6, or sorry, 0.67. And what are we talking about here? Um, degrees centigrade per second. Don't forget your intervals, okay? Don't forget your units, not intervals. Don't forget the units. It's very important that you have units or you'll lose a mark. Okay, so that's really easy, isn't it? Now, let's talk about um, what you would do if you had an equation. So a little bit different now because, let's get this centered on the page here. To estimate the instantaneous rate of change using an equation. So don't look at this yet here. I just wrote that there for a little clue to me to what I want to do. So here's x, and I want to use a point after it. Now don't say, oh, you should use centered. Because we're using an equation, we're going to use a point after it. I'm going to show you what we're actually going to do here. So let's say I pick this point here. So this, is, this coordinate here is going to be x plus h, where h is this distance between x and x plus h, right? So if I said this was 2 and I'm going to add 3, my x would be 3. So I have x and x plus h. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this distance h as small as possible. So I'm going to shrink this. So actually what you're doing is you're holding your finger on this and I'm bringing the h value closer and closer and closer this way, right? I'm moving H this way. So my point's traveling this way so that I'm really close to X. And because you have an equation, that's great, right? Because you can plug in a small little value for H. So if you have an equation, let's say I chose a, an interval of 0 0.0001 which I wouldn't do, and I'm not going to do in this example, but your teacher might say use a 0 0.001 interval. And you can imagine that if you chose h to be 0 0.001, you would be really, really close to this x-coordinate. And that's going to make your estimation as close as possible to the tangent, the slope of the tangent, and that's your instantaneous rate of change. So looking at this equation here, I said this is going to be, so this point here, right, this is um, x plus h, that's my x coordinate, see it was right here, and the height, this is going to be f at x, so this is going to be f at x plus h. It's not confusing at all if you think about it like that. And this point here, this is just going to be x and f at x, right? So my two coordinates are x and f at x and x plus h, let's make that an h, and f at x plus h. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the slope of those. Look, f at x plus h minus f at x. Those are my y's over my run here, x plus h over x. And you can see that that's going to simplify. And this is a formula that you're going to use a lot in calculus to determine the instantaneous rate of change at a point or a general equation for the function. So my x's are going to subtract out and I have this. So the instantaneous rate of change estimated for you is going to be f at x plus h minus f at x over h, h being your interval, right? h equals small, not snail, but small 
interval. Very, very small. The smaller you make it, the more accurate your solution will be. So here's an example. Using y equals the root of x, estimate the instantaneous rate of change with respect to x. Math is very respectful. It's always with respect to x when x is equal to 6. Okay, so that means that what I want to do, I'm going to calculate the instantaneous rate of change is going to be f at x plus h minus f at x over h. So I'm going to choose h equal 0 0.01. Okay, now I could use 0 0.001, I could point 0 0.0001, and the closer, the smaller I make that, the more accuracy I would get to the instantaneous rate of change at that point. So this, for the root of x, this is going to be the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x, that's just my plugging this in here, over h. Okay, so instantaneous rate of change when x is equal to 6. So I'm plugging in 6 now. So I'm going to have the square root of 6 plus 0 0.01. I'm writing it all out. You probably wouldn't write all this yourself. Over the square root of 6 divided by 0 0.01. Okay, so... What's the square root of 6.01 minus the square root of 6 divided by 0 0.01? And if you do that calculation, uh, I'm not going to write it all out every line. It comes out to about 0 0.204. So that's the instantaneous rate of change. So you can see it's, it's small, but if you think of the graph of the square root of x. So you have 0, 0, 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2, maybe up there. So your function's going like this, right? So it's pretty flat when you're out at 6, right? It's pretty flat. So that makes sense that 0 0.204, that's the slope of the line at the point where x is 6. So if I drew a tangent line there, that would approximately be what the slope would be. Okay, so that's your lesson in estimating instantaneous rate of change, and I hope you found it really helpful.